Hello everybody and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I am Blake Connor. And I am Josh Elliott. Josh Elliott. And I don't think we've ever done this introduction without interrupting each other. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're both very impatient lads. Yeah, well, we're, we're both, I feel like both of us know a part of the little intro and we don't know when the other, like, what the other is going to say. So we just kind of interject to make sure we get everything. <laughs> Oh, well, I digress. There's a very special guest joining us tonight. Would you like to introduce yourself? Unless you're shy, don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> that means the least confident. <laughs> My name is Cal Richard Kinman. I am Toad in Luigi's Mansion the Musical. Mm, you know, to be honest, that is pro- that's probably your most well-known role. Uh, that's well, definitely not probably. true. It's, de- it's <laughs> definitely your most well-known role. Twenty-three thousand um, views. That's definitely now, the truth. Now, Cal, I want I want to ask you a question. What does fame feel like? Um, you know, it's kind of like slowly come into my life, but like uh, waking up in the morning and uh, having my roommate recognize me as Toad instead of mm. who I am as a person anymore. <laughs> it's just it's just hard, you know. <laughs> but I put on my pants one leg at a time, just like. Just like the regular peasants that haven't been in uh, a Rapture Films video right now. Sure. That reminds me so much of um, <laughs> of Todd. Well, literally, we don't call him by his real name anymore. Oh, you but, Todd Smithers? <laughs> yeah, our friend, our friend Alec Kern, who is the star of our most popular video on YouTube. Uh, we tease him all the time about the fact that he is known more as Todd the Smithers world. than Alec Kern. <laughs> More people like, in the world know him as Todd Smithers. Well, because I mean, I think that's like, so funny. Well, if you think about it, like, there's no way that like you meet a hundred, or at least like, what's it at, like, 150 thousand views. You know, like, there's no way that he's met that many people in his lifetime. You yeah. know what I mean? And I mean, if he has, there's no way that they all that know many him. people remember him like well, at least. Yeah. So like, everybody who watched that video knew him as Todd, and that is interesting to think about. Cal, you have a you have a pretty um pretty well received performance i mean if oh, this yeah. were on rotten tomatoes you'd be certified fresh my boy well that is an honor but even though rotten tomatoes gives some bad movie reviews sometimes but i appreciate the compliment <laughs> it was the gesture it wasn't yeah. <laughs> mm, do you do are you taking a stand against rotten tomatoes right now is that what you're telling me yeah i think we can all agree that rotten tomatoes isn't the most reliable uh movie critic website or service you know, I, I don't necessarily go to movies based on reviews. I, I sometimes go to movies based on actors and what actors are going to be in it. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, like I saw Aquaman against my better judgment because Jason Momoa was in it and I was severely let down. Yeah. You're a Jason Momoa follower? You're well, part you of know, the Momoites? What, is that a thing? I, I don't hope know. it's not. I have no idea. <laughs> it might be. I hope it's not. Um, no, well, I mean, I, I'm interested in him. Um, I think he's one of my uh, one of my favorite of the uh, DC cast. Um, of course, don't get me wrong. I I don't know. Now that maybe, they've lost half their cast, you mean? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it was ill conceived. <laughs> it went poorly. Um, we don't have to go into the details. All I was saying was, I also love Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones, which BT Dubs comes back next Sunday, and I'm freaking out. Like I have recently. It's not that I haven't known about this for a while, because I I definitely have, Mm. but it has become very relevant in my life. And I would like to share it with you just because I think it's something you might be interested in. Go ahead. So some of my friends are doing fantasy Game of Thrones where they have they have pre set up like a bunch of categories that can earn them points weekly. Mm. And they are doing essentially like a fantasy football or basketball <clears throat> league with characters from Game of Thrones. Okay. Like they drafted the other night and I just think it's very fun. Uh, a group of my friends here is doing something similar with Avengers Endgame. Mm. Uh, like we we are drafting characters soon and based on what happens in the movie, like they'll earn us points. But with a TV show, it's even cooler because it's more like actual fantasy. What what do these points earn you? So have you ever done like fantasy football or anything? I have not, but I was invited to this exact thing. I was invited to a Game of Thrones fantasy league by uh, a friend of mine. 
essentially what it would be is like you draft characters and you mm. would want to draft characters that are like important and would do a lot within the show. And yeah. you would earn points based on like different categories. Like if they killed somebody in an episode or if they were the first person to speak in an episode or the last person to speak in an episode, things like that would earn you points. And then okay. based on how well you drafted uh, at the end of the week, you would compare how many total points you had to everybody else and sure. like see essentially who did the best. And it's really fun because you like you'll go head to head with people every week um, and you'll have like a record like you're in a sports yeah. league or something. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just a cool thing. It's Do a you... fun thing. I think it's definitely more fun for people that play sports. Yeah. But Do I don't you, know. It's a fun fun. Um, participate in like Cal, you you answer this too. Do you guys participate in like March Madness brackets? Uh, in history, I definitely have. But this year i did not and i don't think i did last year either mm. but I, yeah i i've made a bracket every year probably probably ever since middle school but this year i i also forgot to do one this year and it's just like i i had the intentionality of doing it but i just forgot and then like uh i just didn't care enough to like make a late one because yeah. it, it's not as not as fun yeah Tell in me. all in all honesty if iu is bad I don't have as much interest in college basketball. Is this, is it exhausting to keep up with? Or do you just like not watch all the games and kind of guess? No, I, like, I, 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 see, I, I watch most of the games, but that's just because I enjoy watching basketball. It's like that's almost fair. impossible to watch every single game. Though. Oh, well, yeah. dude, I, yeah. No, it's like I, so I have a lot of friends who watch football and I don't really, I don't have anything against football. I've watched football off and on for my entire life, but it is just, exhausting to keep up with like if you want to if you want to like really follow a sports team that yeah. is so much content you're consuming yeah and like anytime i watch a football game like i always have a good time but it always takes so long and it feels like wasted time yeah you know? but i mean if that's your thing if that's the like kind of media that you like to take in it's completely different because growing up like through middle school and high school and stuff like a lot of my friends would talk about like tv shows that they're really into and that kind of stuff yeah. And for me, it was more so like I was just really into sports. No, dude, up. it's like you're not not even it's not <laughs> even just watching it. It's like you're subscribing to a culture. You're subscribing to like a group of people who also engage in this sort of thing, because like you don't just watch football to watch it. You watch it to engage with other people, you know, and uh, talk about teams and like play in fantasy leagues, things like that, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I have ne <laughs> like, it's it's a lot to think about. Like uh, doing something like that. Like it does seem fun. It's just like a lot, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like if you don't have any specific topics in mind, I potentially have a topic for us to discuss. Um, please go ahead. I am I'm spitballing. We're just hanging out, man. Um. So I have, well, I have enjoyed the movie theater experience my entire life. Mm. Um, and I think there's a lot to talk about here. So what would you say, and you can either one answer this, mm. but what is your strategy when going to the movies? Like, and I'm talking as far as like, what movies do you decide to go to? Do you get popcorn and like drinks and stuff? Do you yeah. get early enough to watch the previews? Like, where do you like to sit? Like literally anything. Like, okay. Like the ideal movie theater experience yeah cal what okay. would you say your ideal movie theater experience is um i don't like yeah I, I love the movie theater experience it's one of my favorite like things to do whenever like i have money available on me being a college student that's hard to come by sometimes as we can understand that but uh whenever i do have money like i'm almost always down to go to the movies just because i like being with people mm -hmm. but um i that being said i don't like growing with like a group of like 20 or 30 people like my ideal number is like two or three like 
personally, just like I like the small groups just because on the way you can get in the car and just talk about the movie the whole way back. And, and like I just the, the movie theater experience in itself, I just love like I, I like a popcorn and a drink. Usually um, sometimes I'll get it out of the trash and dump it out and get a free refill. But that means I'm kind of a bum. This but, just uh, in Cal has admitted to being a raccoon. No, that is absolutely Unknown. that is absolutely the best strategy though for popcorn. The drink is a little more sketchy. You have to go in and uh, <laughs> wash it. At, I have gone. I've got it. A, I've done it before too. I've got the large <laughs> drink out of the trash. I've gone into the bathroom and I've washed it out with soap and water, and I've had people look at me with condemnation in their heart. See, I don't I use. Care. I don't even. I even go further than that. I don't even use soap. I just use water. Oh. <laughs> dude you're drinking trash soda i mean they used the straw like well, i'm washing it out it's fine yeah we're not using the same straw anymore. dude i'm t- <laughs> i'm taking i'm taking a, a food preparation and safety course right now at college and it's just like i'm freaking out for you boys now <laughs> hey you just not you just need to not worry so much about the whole health scare thing uh, continue but yes, <laughs> seating wise, uh, I like about like middle middle section, like uh, like not too far back, not too far up or close to the screen. But if I had to pick one of those two, definitely I would choose back. I yeah, definitely I the worst seats. Pretty basic. Fun. Yeah, I'm pretty basic when it comes to my <laughs> seats. Not to call you a normie. <laughs> yeah, I my my movie theater strategy besides uh, being a raccoon, that's not a normie thing, but. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, seating wise, I'm pretty basic with that. No, I definitely agree though. That's the optimal place to sit for sure. No, it's like in the middle, kind of higher up. But now, when I when I go to the when I go to see a film, okay, there are a few there are a few important things to me. You sound like the, such a snob. But no, 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 <laughs> you're no. You're the first listen. person that's changed to film. No, no keep going. Just, no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> I um I first of all, I think it's important to choose who you go with. Because there are people in your life that like you really love, but you'd never want to go see movies with either because you dis like disagree with it. Okay, that's Dude, another thing. Would you I mind? Like going- would you mind adding a few people right now? Like, I, I almost give an example of some people that you really dislike going to the movies. I with. almost oh. name drop. It took everything. I forgot I was on a podcast. I almost name dropped somebody immediately. I mouthed out the name of the person, <laughs> Josh, <laughs> but I'm not going to say their name out no, loud. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to roast anybody. But it's like you. You know what I mean? There are people who they go to movies or like if you invite somebody to a movie that's a sequel and they're like, oh, well, I haven't seen the first one, and then they're just oh, like yeah, asking that's questions annoying. the that's whole annoying. time. Oh, you yeah. know, it's like don't go. Like don't just go. Just talkers. You're gonna... Talkers in general are annoying in movies. Yeah. Like, no, you go I, to I'm, a, I'm pretty uptight about it, like, even not in the theater experience. But people that yeah. talk, like, in the movie theater, oh, you're, yeah. the, you're the bottom of the barrel of human existence. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I also think it's important. I like going to films um, with people, like, with differing opinions. Like, that way I get a couple of perspectives every time I leave. Like, usually... People you have in to have my your group. token feminist in the group, and then... no, 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 that's I'm not what I'm... I'm <laughs> no, no. When you go, I just think it's it's co- it's cool to have different um, perspectives and different ideas being thrown around instead of like the worst thing ever is when I ask somebody, "Hey, what did you think of a movie?" Because movies to me are really important. I really like watching movies. I think they're like, I mean, it's what I want to do with my life. I want to make movies, you know. And when people just say like, "Oh, it was good." And like, I don't learn anything from that. You know, yeah. like, if I ask you what you thought of a movie, like, I want you to go in detail. I want you to tell me, like, if you didn't like it, why? Like, what was wrong <laughs> with it? You know what I mean? Like, I like when people analyze movies. So I try to go with people who do that sort of thing. I never buy any food. It's r- just uber expensive. Um, and it's not even that I like dislike supporting movie theaters or anything crazy like that. It's just like I eat before I go. And, yeah, like, that's I don't fair. like. I don't like theater food that much anyway. Like, it's it's delicious, don't get me wrong, but, like, it's just junk. You know, See, I feel gross for, after I eat a bunch of popcorn. For me, like, I don't know. I don't buy movie theater, like, popcorn and stuff a majority of the time when I go to the movies. Yeah. But if I'm going to, like, a huge blockbuster, yeah. like, for example, Avengers Endgame, mm-hmm. you better believe I'm going to have a popcorn Treat and a drink when I'm going to get, that movie. Don't get a drink, dude. Don't get a drink. Otherwise, well, I'm you're going to get trash up. food, but, you know. Well, I mean, but you gotta, <laughs> you gotta I, prepare that bladder, dude. Buy some Huggies, bring them in, because you can't leave that movie. I in heard the that they're thinking about having an. Break. I heard that they're thinking about having an intermission because, like, it's like a three-hour movie. 
That's just you what know? I've heard. I, I, th- I think it would, I would be for it. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed. I think that would be good. I like the idea of having intermission in most movies. Like if a movie is longer than an hour and a half, just have like a five, ten minute intermission. Like yeah. that's not going to ruin anybody's day. Five or ten minutes might not be enough, you know. If you have a if you have a fat a fat poo coming out, I mean, oh, if you geez. can't get back to your seat in ten minutes, you've got an issue. Well, hey, um, I I also like I I also like interactive crowds. So uh, the Frog Baby Film Festival was just a few days ago, which um, for those of you listeners who don't know what that is, which is probably all of you, it is the film festival that takes place on Ball State's campus. This is my uh, my fourth year going. And I always really like that atmosphere. Uh, Josh, I don't I don't recall so much what sophomore year was like when you went to uh, the festival with me. What was the audience like? Was there a big crowd? I don't remember. It was a pretty decent crowd. Yeah, it was I a good turnout. It's like the only context in which I've ever had someone react to like or that large of a crowd react to my films. You know, like you just get genuine unbiased opinions in like the way of people's reactions to something. And that's what I love about going to full movie theaters. Like I like going, but like only at certain times, you know, like for big event films, like Avengers infinity war or sorry, uh, Avengers Endgame. When I go, I know it's going to be packed and I'm so excited because that crowd is going to be electric. Yeah. Yeah, It's going to be so awesome. Um, You can both of, I would love for both of you to answer this as well, but, um, what is your favorite memory from any theater, like any theater experience that it was just an amazing memory? Mm. Um, I have two yeah. that immediately come to mind, so I might just sandwich you guys. Um, the first one that I just think is very funny uh, is when I went to go see Star Wars The Force Awakens. Mm. And this was like obviously a huge deal, you know, the return of Star Wars. Yeah, because this was the first movie uh, since Disney bought uh, Lucasfilms, like bringing back the franchise and the hype, Kylo Ren, the hype to this movie was unreal. And I went to the theater uh, with some of my friends. We drove up to the IMAX theater in Indianapolis. And as the movie was starting, you know, you see you see Star Wars up on the or you don't see Star Wars, you see in a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. And when that happened, you know, it's silent. You're anticipating the... But in that silence, somebody at the top of their voice just says, Yeah, Star Trek! And then immediately, the entire crowd turned on this man. <laughs> and he got berated by everybody that was there. Like, people were booing him. People were telling him to shut the F up. People were, like, throwing popcorn at him. Like, it was the funniest thing I have ever witnessed in a movie theater. And it just makes me so happy to think about that. And I'm honestly very thankful for that man. Because even though he was being an ass, like, that experience is forever burned into my Mm -hmm. mind. And I have him to thank for it. That guy sounds like a legend to me. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, that's my favorite, uh, for, at least funniest movie yeah. theater experience, for sure. For me, I don't know. Um, I, I don't recall too many like amazing movie theater experiences in the sense of like, I don't often go to like movies opening night or things like that. Um, I, sometimes I wish I did more. It's just like it really takes an event. <laughs> Uh, for me to go to that, you know, like an Avengers or something like that. But when I went to see Captain Marvel not too long ago, I thought the movie was okay. But the thing that really made me happy was that it was a full theater, and at the beginning they replaced the uh, the Marvel Studios um, intro with yeah. j- all photos of Stan Lee. Yeah. And when that happened, like the whole room just erupted into applause. Yeah, that was like, really cool. I, and it was just great. And like everybody was just like, appreciating this man Mm. uh and then when it was over everybody just like somebody goes yeah stan lee and we all just kind of went back to our seats and it was just like it was a little surreal you know like it wasn't planned nobody expected that but we all just like applauded him it was cool yeah that's really cool i like that cal do you have anything do you have anything that comes to mind 
Um, yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind was um, a, a Quiet Place. I remember mm. Ooh, that was that's one, a good one. That was one of the best movie theater experiences I've ever had. Just I remember um, just being like like everyone was so respectfully quiet because there's not a lot of dialogue in that whole movie, and yet it's so powerful and. It's probably my favorite movie theater experience ever. Just like being there with the surround sound and just like everybody's so passionate, like caring about the characters. And like it was just a beautiful movie. And I, this probably, probably my favorite movie theater experience ever. Have you ever walked out of a movie? Uh, yeah. I, I have not. I've never walked out of a movie. I, I have walked out of a movie. It wasn't it wasn't because of my decision, though, it was because of my parents. It was like one of those things. Uh, well, in, it, it was a it, that movie sucked too. looking back on it now. But I was a kid uh, and it was an Adam Sandler movie. Oh, you remember Click? Sucked. You guys remember yeah. the movie Click? Yeah, I was I was a, I was a kid and my parents took me and they're like and I think there was like a sex scene or something. And they're like, oh, we got to go. And I just remember like watching it later on in life, expecting to think it was funny and then being disappointed. Well, yeah, no, um, uh, yeah, when you think about it, like, there's some movies that just kids shouldn't watch, you know? Yeah, the sheer amount of children that were at Deadpool just blew my mind. Yeah. It's like, how can you be such a bad parent? Makes me sad. Like, taking your seven, eight, nine-year-old kid to this movie, it's like, for one, did you not watch any previews? Like, any of the trailers to this movie, as a parent, should, like, throw up every single red flag in the arsenal but like yeah i don't know that that just shocked me honestly i i have not ever walked out of a movie but i have slept through two movies i have also slept through movies Uh, but i am too stubborn of a person to walk out of a movie in my mm. mind, it's something that I've paid for, and I'm going to at least be in the theater. You know no, what I no. mean? Like, I, I, I give movies a bit. Like, I want to see the conclusion. You know, I feel like it's unfair for me to make a decision on a movie without seeing the conclusion. Now, the movies that I fell asleep for were Ghost in the Shell, the new one with Scarlett Johansson. I, didn't I couldn't. See it. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess you're not missing much. I don't often fall asleep in movies. Um, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Yeah, fair enough. I lose track. Is that the fifth or fourth one? I, you know, I'll be honest. I don't know. There's, <laughs> there are so many of them, dude. Yeah, um, I um, I, I might get some slack from this, but the only movie that I vividly remember falling asleep in, and I know I've done it with other movies, but I specifically remember falling asleep in Guardians of the Galaxy two. <laughs> and I know I might get some hate for that, but genuinely. <laughs> The so movie funny. just did not interest me. Mm. I don't know what it was, but it just did not capture my interest. You want to know something I saw the other day that just like really grinds my gears? <laughs> Absolutely. I Absolutely. I was looking up a list. Like I, I love lists. I love making lists and ranking things, Same. ranking people. I ju- <laughs> it's probably not good to say, but I admit that I, I, I have made lists of people before that I know. But um. Uh, one thing I saw was I looked up the list of the best Marvel movies. I mean, the best Marvel villains yet, because I've been watching uh, the Endgame trailer a lot. And Thanos gets me dumb lit hype because Thanos is such a badass. He is so cool. And and like I'm I'm a pretty like guy like I stand with justice, even in movies like I can appreciate a good villain, but I rarely do. I like them, but I like Thanos. He is cool. Mm. And I remember looking at this list and I remember seeing like, there's 26 Marvel Marvel villains in the cinematic universe, and like Thanos was at number seven. Okay, that's and I was immediately triggered. A I was immediately triggered, and you will not believe who they put at number one. Mm. I'm gonna guess. Oh gosh, I don't even want to guess. Ronan because... the Accuser. No, he he was like <laughs> was 21. It, was it was it Loki or Ultron? Because those are the only like I don't know. It was it. it Loki was number two. Okay. Number one was Obadiah Stane. No, it wasn't Obadiah. <laughs> I, I would, Obadiah was six though. He was ahead of Thanos. That's so dumb. dude. Obadiah was a good villain, but not as good as He's Thanos. He's Thanos. Well, no, but but we already established Thanos isn't number one. Well, that's what this guy established. Not me. Let me let me hear it. I'm, I'm tired. Number of one was it. the Mandarin from Iron Man three. What? Yeah. I can't even remember Iron Man 3, if I'm being honest. That's the one I remember the least. Well, you don't need to rewatch it. 
It's better than Iron Man 2, but not very much better. You sent me, Josh, you sent me an Iron Man edit uh, this oh, yeah. morning. I did. <laughs> um, I like that. Dude, I, I, th- I think there's a place in this world for good edits like that. You know, like super oh, cuts sure. of like existing content that people put to like awesome music. Yeah, stuff like we that. will for everybody that's listening, we will put that link in the description. It's so cool. Su- it's so it's cool. super cool. I, I spend more time than I'd, I'd like to admit watching things like that because it's like such a testament to storytelling through editing. Just as yeah, far as like sure. you can take these clips that are completely <laughs> unrelated, you know, that happened in different movies across like over a decade. You know, they super cut stuff from Iron Man 1 with stuff from Infinity War. But they use all these lines of dialogue and they tell this cohesive story. It's so cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, man, Iron Man 1, that was a different time. It was. I was I've, I've just started like watching um, not all of the Marvel movies, but I'm like watching key Marvel movies leading up to Endgame. Yeah. And we started with Captain America. And first of all, like, it's a pretty good movie, but man, it's dated. Like, and it's it's dated in a sense where, like, it came out, like, you know, ten, not not too long ago, like, like 10, in the 2000s. Years ago. But still, it's like, I don't know, just comparing it to, like, new Marvel movies, it's just it's just it's just incomparable. I and like even comparing like it to the Winter Soldier. Movies. Like, no, I like them, too. They're just different. Like, it's just very different. Well, well, yeah, like stylistically, I don't think they'd really found what they were going for yet. I feel like they figured out a formula for like, sure. By the time yeah. like Iron Man 2 rolled around, like they figured out what they wanted to do with the universe. And then all of the movies kind of fit under this umbrella of like, all right, this needs to fit for the Avengers, you know. Because that's what it's always been. That's the crazy thing about this movie that's coming out is that's what it's been leading up to for over a decade. You know, and that's so exciting. Okay, Phil Coulson from S.H.I.E.L.D. was in Iron Man 1. I forgot that he was trying to recruit Iron Man for the Avengers initiative. So it's like from 11 years ago, like they were already preparing for this. And it's just like I think it's easy to be jaded by the number of them and like just, oh, here's another Marvel movie. Um but it really is crazy cool to think that this is like the biggest sequel of all time. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I mean, just think about how long they've been building up to Thanos. Like mm. Thanos was in an end credit scene. Was in it 2012? Avengers? In 2012, yes. Yeah, that's insane to me. Like set, they introduced a villain like six and a half years before they used him in a movie. It's a power move. Dude, my freshman year of high school, I remember getting excited for the I like tent polling the release of the first Avengers. And now I'm doing the same thing seven years later for the fourth Avengers movie for the fourth Avengers movie. Yeah, that's it's incredible. That's crazy. They've created a masterpiece like through their cinematic. universe. You know, I'll be honest. I, I just don't know how interested I'm going to be if they if they end this storyline in the MCU. I don't think I'm really that interested in seeing them establish another. Like, I just don't think the stakes can get higher than Thanos. I mean, that's fair. Uh, I'm just excited to see what they do with it. So I'll I will definitely be sticking around. It's yeah, but it's I mean, it's I can't speak on movies to say, that haven't come out yet. It's dismissive to say I wouldn't want to watch movies after they've done something so incredible and so beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's just like I literally do not know how they can top it. Yeah, like I'm no, so fair. excited for it. But it's like to me, it just doesn't add up. Like it seems like they've created something so great, just so fantastic. It's like I don't think they can top it. You know, like how can you do more than that? Well, Just Marvel has day. continuously surprised me in the past, so we, we will see. And I mean, I've had my fair share of complaints about Marvel throughout the years, but <clears throat> yeah, you it can't compare to you how can't bad DC argue, is. You can't argue against what they've done because they yeah. really have done done something special. Like you can nitpick if you want to, like this movie wasn't that good, or they should have done this differently. But at the end of the day, like what they've created is something special. Mm. It's unlike anything else that we've ever seen. Yeah, because it's like, unlike anything anybody's ever seen. I like, mean, it transcends as... like it's it's bigger than Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Like not in, not necessarily in like cultural impact and like his like historic like just as how how highly received the movies are. 
Yeah. But as far as like how big their universe is and how much they've done, mm-hmm. it absolutely transcends all of it. Like yeah. out, outside of like, I mean, if you if you're only counting the movies, like, I mean, Star Wars has, you know, an absurd amount of TV shows and books and like well, all this well, stuff. Well, but... you think about that. And so do the so do the Marvel characters. You know, like I mean, they've got yeah, books, but then you, like they have you way more comic backstory. books. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not even talking about comic books. Have you ever been interested in comic books? The only comic book I've ever read consistently is The Walking Dead. You know, and, and it's I know that it comes in a air graphic quotes novel. graphic novel. But yeah, you know, same same deal. I have not caught up on that, but I, I have made it very far. That is the only um, graphic novel I ever kept up with. Um, and it's exa- it's like. I don't want to say it's exhausting, but like it's it's a very mature audience for sure. Oh, absolutely. Like the themes of The Walking Dead. The wa- well, I guess I I haven't watched The Walking Dead in a while, but it's much more twisted what oh, happens yeah. the in TV the TV show, the TV show itself, like it has some like iffy like dark things. It really does. Like The Walking Dead show gets very dark, but it doesn't even compare to the comic books as far no. as like how far they're willing to go. Yeah. What is the craziest thing you guys have ever seen on TV? On uh, TV? Or like, like, okay, when I say craziest, like, you, you watched it, and it's like something, say, let's, let me even constrain this further. What's the most violent thing you've ever seen aired, like, on TV? This is like public TV, right? Yes. Like, Netflix doesn't count or anything? Um, yeah, or like, yes, yes, public okay. TV. I honestly think, unless they've done something crazier, which they probably have, when Glenn died on oh, The Walking yeah. Dead, that was, like, too yeah. much for me. I it think was... The Walking Dead has done the three most gruesome things that I've ever witnessed. Yeah. Um, and they just continue to top themselves. because It's disgusting. When The Walking Dead, when they cut off Herschel's head, which, yeah, I mean, I, remember that. I apologize. I should have said spoiler warning. But we've spoiled two big deaths already. But <laughs> oh, forget it, dude. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah. But I don't care. It's fine. If you if you if you just I don't got think anybody's gonna start watching the Walking for you, Dead now. That's fair. Yeah. That's very fair. But when they cut off Herschel's head, like that was that was something. Mm. Like they showed they showed something pretty gruesome on TV, <sighs> and then they go on to top it by bashing Glenn's head in. Oh, and his like eyeball is popping yeah. out. Yeah, man. It was brutal. And then in this previous season, they do something, which I won't spoil it for you, Blake, but they did something towards the end of the season that was really hardcore. And, and yeah, I, I just recommend, like, whenever you, whenever The Walking Dead's done, which, who knows at this point, but it's definitely a show that, to begin with, it's better as a binge, because you don't have to wait. Because The yeah. Walking Dead undoubtedly lulls at points. Yeah. Um, but as a binge, I think it's one of the best shows of all time. And mm. you're you have some cool things that you can look forward to. That's for sure. And what about- that's something interesting, though. And if you if you want to talk about something else, we can. But oh, the difference between the difference between like a binging show and a uh, and a show that you like watching as it comes out, because I do think they're very different things. But yeah, Cal, did you have anything to say about shocking like yeah. TV deaths? Um, this is or... actually a, a funny story I like to tell people, and you'll really appreciate this, Blake. I think I've told Josh before, mm. but I remember I was a wee little lad in a junior in high school, I believe, and I was at my friend Michael's house, mm. and he was telling me all about Game of Thrones, mm. and I was like, I Do we definitely need to throw out a spoiler alert. Yeah, it, it, it's too late. It's it's like it's a long time ago, but it's <laughs> probably spoiled but, enough. But yeah, potential yeah. spoiler if you're a Game of Thrones behind, I guess, which this is the only episode I've ever watched. I've only ever watched one. Oh, this is so and, funny. And he said, <laughs> all right, well, a new episode just came out. So you why don't you just watch this episode with me and see if you like it? I'm like, well, like I don't have HBO at my house and I guarantee my parents would not let me watch the show like with all the with all the nudity and murder yeah. and everything. And I'm like, but like, 
I could watch it whenever I'm over here. Yeah, sure. And I watched it, and it was the Red Wedding episode. <laughs> and everyone died. <laughs> just everyone died for no reason. It didn't make any sense to me. And I just remember being really sad, and it was super, super violent, and they stabbed a pregnant woman. And, like... <laughs> It was in the stomach, and it was just like, I don't like this show. Oh, and my then, God. And then That's I a remember, dark place to come in, dude. I screamed when that happened. <laughs> I remember Michael looked at me afterwards and said, I am so sorry. And it was the most <laughs> genuine apology I think I've ever had. Like, he was genuinely, like, horrified that that was the episode he showed me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I yeah. think that's so funny. No, it was, um, dude, well, since we already spoiled it, the the Red Wedding in and of itself is is really a horrific thing to witness. Like I, my oh, guard was sure. down. My guard was down. I was like watching this, and it was in the middle of the night at my house in Bedford. And it was probably like one a.m. And then um, Walder Frey, you know, he's like, ah, oh, and he he raises um, uh, the crossbows, and they just start shooting everybody. And then somebody stabs, like you said, his pregnant wife. And I was squealing like a baby because I was horrified. I did not expect <laughs> it at all. It was like. Ee! <laughs> I did not expect it either. <laughs> and it was, and it truly is like, it's, it, the worst part is it's like, if you're the actor, how could you be happy after that? Like, how can yeah. you be like happy? That's how your character ended. You know, like picture Steven Yeun on The Walking Dead. He made yeah. it, what, six seasons, mm -hmm. seven, six or seven seasons? I think it's six. He died, then, he died in the season seven premiere. And oh. then they just bat like, man, you couldn't show people that. Like, yeah, think if he has children, they couldn't watch that, man. That'd be messed up. Yeah, for sure. Like, think about seeing your dad and like, as you know him, basically just brutally murdered on TV. Yeah, that's dark. That would that's be really hard to dark. watch. I remember that watching Glenn die. That was that was really hard. Yeah. Like you think about like if you're like if you're on a show like Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead, do you show your kids what you do for I a mean, living? I mean, I just think like when they're old enough, it's fine. Like it's up to them. Yeah. But yeah, but that like, is at that what is age do you start doing that? You know what I mean? I would I would think it's just whatever age you would normally do something like yeah. that. Yeah. Do you guys remember the first rated R movie you've ever watched? Uh, I don't. I, I do, actually. And it's a super random movie. But my first rated R movie was The Green Zone. Have I've either of you seen of that? that? No, I've never, never heard of that. It is an obscure movie, and it was very okay. Like, it wasn't that good. And the only reason I watched it was my dad brought it home from the video store, and he walked into the living room and looked at me, and he's like, Josh, you're old enough to watch an R-rated movie now. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> so I sat down, and we watched an R-rated movie together. And it was a movie he'd never seen. It was a movie I'd never seen, obviously. And that's it was a dangerous war. game to play. It is. It, it's a war movie, and it was okay. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I do remember because it was a moment. I don't know. It was a specific moment with my dad that I remember. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember when the first R-rated movie I watched was. It, I guess it wasn't that significant, whatever it was. And then at that point, I turned into a monster and I just watched everything, <laughs> anything and everything. Oh, man. Yeah, there are there are like some movies that I could only uh, like I was afraid to rent, you know, like I never wanted to pick out movies because I was afraid of like the content that they might have in them. And then like how embarrassed I'd be if I was watching them with my parents like did you okay listen you boys you boys are old enough you can disclose this information do you ever have to awkwardly sit through a sex scene in a movie with your with, with your, your parents yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the worst that is no matter how old i get it is always uncomfortable yeah well, there's just like what what how could it not be uncomfortable like i'm in the same room as my mom and these people are just going at it on tv <laughs> <laughs> you have to look away like especially least, when it's yeah you have to even if it's like something like really like sometimes those scenes are like important to the plot, but like not often, one, but sometimes they are. Yeah, yeah like, sometimes they are. Usually not often. You're right. But like sometimes they are. And like but like mom will mom will like she'll she'll yell at me if I don't close my eyes. <laughs> yeah. One thing that just came into my mind, like very uh, as soon as Cal said what he just said, uh, like in sex scenes, like something important to the plot happening. 
We just watched a mini series, <laughs> and Blake, I highly recommend this mini series. It's very cool. What is it? Um, it was just released on Netflix like a few weeks ago, and it's called um, Death Love, Love, Death Love, and Robots. Oh, I watched the first episode of that. Okay, you should watch all of it because it's very cool. Every episode is a different story and has a different animation. Yeah, and it's just really, really cool. Yeah, but the first episode. Oh, Did you watch the whole thing with the with the two monsters that fight each other? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Edge. So yes. towards the end of the video, there is. Well, the episode, there is a lesbian sex scene. And yeah. Do you recall? I do. I do. <laughs> because I was just all, like we all were like not really watching it. We were just kind of like, like, well, should we skip this? And we eventually like somebody fast forwarded. And I think it was actually Cal that fast forwarded. But um, we got to the end and we realized that <laughs> we realized we had missed some huge plot th- developments. Yeah. Like the story had essentially like approached a climax and we had completely no pun intended there. Oh, my gosh, I hate myself. <laughs> but <laughs> but we had we'd completely missed it. And yeah, no, because I know exactly what happens in that scene. I know exactly what you're talking about. You would have uh, you would have missed some big some big stuff. Oh, yeah. And I mean, to be fair, it's only like a 13 minute like episode anyway. Yeah, but <laughs> wasn't terribly important, but yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's that's definitely. <clears throat> a thing. Yeah, no, I remember um, I vividly remember I was watching um, Hansel and Gretel witch hunters oh gosh with my dad and there's a scene there's a i don't it's i don't remember if they actually do anything or not but there's definitely a nude scene oh, in yeah. a jacuzzi with a woman and i remember me and my dad are sitting on their like bed we're like <laughs> four feet apart and we're just like li- like lying prone with our heads on pillows because we always watch movies laying down when i watch movies with my dad so we're both just sitting there and like i'm just thinking do i say we skip it or do we just gut it out so we both just sat there uncomfortably for like a minute that's well, they did what they were doing and then it passed funny. and we never talked about it. It's just like, why do movies have to throw that in there? Like, I mean, uh, honestly, you know, if it's not really essential to the plot, like. We'll come full circle here because it's always pleasant to go full circle. Mm. But Marvel has built a huge cinematic universe and develop incredibly developed so many characters and not once in any Marvel movie. Is there anything close to a sex scene? Well, like, Iron Man 1, he definitely bangs that reporter. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't show like anything. Though. It doesn't. It, well, I mean, it like it definitely like you see him fiercely making out in in lewd, uh, you know, like in their underwear and then they they fall. Uh, I, don't, I don't even I watched rem- it I don't last even night. remember that. I watched, <laughs> I watched Iron Man last night. And yes, it's it, it, it's heavily implied. All right. Well, I take that back then because I did not recall that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like it doesn't show it, but like and it's on there for a very brief time. But like he definitely. Yeah, but they definitely show some. But I mean, still, the point is still there. Like you don't you don't need nudity and you don't need to like like lead things leading into a sex scene like whatever. That's fine. Like that'll develop a character that'll like progress a story and that's fine. But like media you just don't need like excessive sex it doesn't have to be excessive like, you know like i i see its place it has its place but like and even in iron man with marvel that was like but it was a flashback before tony stark spoiler alert, by the way for iron man one <laughs> it was a flashback to like before like uh you see tony get captured by by the people that uh obadiah hired to kill him whoa i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Get, obadiah excuse hired. me <laughs> oh, but I hires to kill him and everything. And it's like you see, he's like a, he's arrogant. He's a d bag, and he's having he's having sex with random reporters that are kind of that are kind of good looking, and <laughs> and then and then like it just shows him like once he gets back, he's a changed man. He's turning into a hero. He's becoming the Iron Man, you know. And like even that sex scene adds to his character there. If that yeah. like and like even Marvel when they do like the only time I, I'm pretty sure that's the only movie where there is a sex scene. Yeah. in the Marvel universe, and like it adds to character. So like, yeah. I still think it stands to how great Marvel. In how Man great of Steel, I'm pretty done. sure Lois Lane bangs Superman. 
Well, there's the whole scene of him getting in the tub with her. Or is in that the bathtub? I, I, I don't remember that. that. I remember that. Yeah. They, I don't remember that. He like comes home and she's like in the bathtub and he just like climbs in with her. <laughs> does, does he climb in with all his clothes on? I'm pretty sure he does, actually. <laughs> clothes but, can't stop Superman. <laughs> I would like to I would like to end the podcast with that with the that idea, that image. Clothes can't stop Superman. Um, yeah, well, no, they never could. Listen, I've got it pulled up in another tab right now. I'm watching. Um, oh, yeah, he absolutely. Oh, no. Oh, God. OK, I, I regret looking at this now. It just felt like it just felt like I was watching porn for a second. Um, <laughs> he definitely uh, he, he he strips down, but he keeps on his jeans. Interesting. Interesting choice, man of steel. That's enough. That's enough. All right. Thank you for tuning in to Destination Unknown. Thank and you thank for joining you for us. thank you for Cal. Yeah. Cal Subscribe Richard to PewDiePie. <laughs> yes. Do your part in the war. Subscribe Do to that. PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> and we will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I'm Jesse. I just need a beat. Cal Pacino will set me free. Macchiato and Mocha Dreams. Still I keep what I want. I'm a Cal thing. 